2 Corinthians 10, I want to go back to what we did a little bit ago. We are not done with this because there are some people going to get set free today. It was one of the most awesome Wednesday nights we've had in a long time. It was just so much deliverance in the place, and that's, we believe in deliverance. We believe in people being set free. We believe in helping people connect with the thoughts or the memories of your past that won't let you move forward. Let me say that again. We believe this church is called to do a number of things, but in order for us to fulfill our vision and help and equip you for ministry and to set you in a ministry to help you with gifts of the Spirit, all of that can be totally hindered if you don't think right. So we deal in, we're dealing with some of us are trapped by memories of the past that will not let you move to the next place. Some of you are blessed to be going through some tremendous tests. And I said blessed because you wouldn't be tested if you weren't up for promotion. So tests are good. It's an examination before promotion. The thing is, if you don't think right, you don't receive the, the test right, you'll end up doing what was in, I think it's Deuteronomy 1, which said you've gone around this mountain long enough. It's time to move forward. It's hard to move forward when your mind won't let you. You cannot go any further than your mind will let you go. The enemy knows that, and he's good at it, and he knows if he can drop some thoughts in your head and you believe it and take it to be God or to take it to be truth, no matter what we preach up here, no matter what you're taught, no matter what your friends tell you, it will not penetrate your soulish realm because you believe what you think to be truth. So when truth comes, it, it doesn't mix with your truth, and you receive your truth instead of God's truth. You hear what I'm saying to you? All right, you got to use your Bibles because I got, I, I wanted to put this on the board so some of you back in the back may not be able to read it. I, she, I had her to draw a square at the Bible. Once you read from the Bible, uh, 2 Corinthians 10, 3, 4, and 5. That's the basis of what we are talking about. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. I'm not, <laughs> that, that doesn't say that. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. But what happens when you hear what you're saying in your mind, but you don't hear what the Word is saying? Hello? How do I have faith when there's a word preached to bring faith, and I say amen in church, hallelujah, I know that's the truth, but, but, but before you can get to the car, there is a double-mindedness that happens, that I get back to this, that, but... Before you can get to the car, you reason in your mind, that was good, and I would leave it in church. But now, how can that happen? How can I forgive her? How can I forgive him? In church under the notion, you cried, I got to forgive him when I get home. But before you can get to the car, you think of reasons why you shouldn't forgive, so you stay in rebellion. I believe I ought to give. I believe it's right. The scripture says it. But you reason in your mind and what you have learned in the past and sometimes traditions won't let you obey God. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. I don't know how much you come to church, how often you come. You cannot please God without faith. Whatever is not of faith is sin. Let me read the definition of, of traditions to you. I've done it before, but I'm going to do it again. Y'all going to be all right. The doctor, home visit, you're going to be all right. Traditions. An inherited, established, or customary pattern of thought. I'm going to do it enough for you to write it down if you're taking notes. A, an inherited, established, or customary, customary pattern of thought, action, or behavior. Where did it come from? Hand it, hand it down information or beliefs. It was handed down to you. Customs by the word of mouth or by example from one generation to another. It was information or thoughts or customs or behaviors or actions that was handed down by word of mouth or action. You either heard it or you saw it. And you bring it in and the word of God says, clearly that if traditions will make the word of God of no effect with no power, 
whatever you believe to be truth will not let what God says that is true help you. Jesus dealt with strongholds when he went to his own and he could not do any mighty miracles because of their stronghold, their unbelief. In their mind, they believed if I know the person well, he can't be of help to me. Mm. So he went there and he could only heal a few sick folk. The very son of the living God couldn't help folk because of their thinking. Help me here, help me here. There is a king in the Bible that by the name of Naaman had leprosy. The prophet went to him. It's a whole story then in 2 Corinthians 5, 2 Kings 5. Then I'm not go through the whole thing. They went and got the king, Elijah, went and got the prophet Elijah, and said, This man of God can help you with your leprosy. Elijah sends a message to him saying, Tell him if you will go jump in the lake seven times. He'll be healed. The man's stronghold was, I'm the king. And surely there are some better water than that. Second thing is, I thought he would come in my house and summon the king and jump up and down and lay hands on me because in my mind, I think that's the way you get healed. In my mind, I think this is how church is supposed to go, so I rebel against anything that don't seem like what's customary. Mm. Are you hearing me? So when we read 2 Corinthians that we got on the board, you will read something about a stronghold which is considered a castle or a fortress. Jesus is our fortress. When we enter into him, we're safe. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous enter into it and are safe. You hear what I just said? The name of the Lord is as a strong tower, we enter into the name of Jesus, and we are safe. It's a secret place. Your stronghold is a fortress. It's a safe place for wrong thinking. Hallelujah. For wrong thinking. For wrong thinking. For wrong beliefs. For set patterns of thinking. Which makes you think, I am right. No matter what you say, truth cannot penetrate my castle. And all I need is something to come along and confirm my belief, and then you got to draw a double wall around your castle. See, I told you they didn't like me. Mm. See, I told you <laughs> that wouldn't work. <laughs> See, I told you they were going to do that. See, I told you that dude, I started saying another word. I told you that dude wasn't right. Almost that close. Told you he wasn't right. So you go, strongholds will dictate whether you have good, wholesome relationships. You cannot have a healthy marriage relationship or be a healthy, good church member with wrong thinking. It will not work. You can have the most loving husband and the most loving wife, but everything they do seems like it is out of kilter, if you will, or is something wrong with what they're doing, or they're doing it for some ulterior motive. It's not a puteness of their heart because of the way you think, because everybody in the past that ever did anything for you wanted something from you. So when you get somebody that don't, you think they do too. So it's a stronghold. Now, you're never happy because nobody ever does anything with a pure heart, you think. Therefore, you're fragmented. You're not whole. When a person is whole, they are available for increase. You're not available for increase and healing and moving forward unless you're whole. When you're fragmented, your body is one place, your mind is one place, and your soul is another. Hmm. If the body of Christ does not get healed from that which is in the past, from that which hurt them, there is no way you can successfully move forward in the power of the Holy Ghost and have the joy of the Lord, that which is your strength. Mm. Do you hear me? Let's read my scripture. I put up there, please. Second Corinthians 
hand three says, I, want, I don't want just him reading. I want you to read. Tell somebody, this is your day. Y'all watch that on TV. This is your day. This is your day. If I could get you to listen to me, I can get you to pay attention. I can get you to key in here. If I can get you to don't say, listen to me. Don't say this is not you. Don't use the principle of exclusion and sit here and say, oh, I wish so and so was here. That's them. It could be you. Because anytime the enemy, which is sneaky as he is, he will bring pride on you. The word pride, another word in the Greek or the Hebrew, which I don't remember exactly which one, it says smoke, which means it's hard to detect or to see when you have pride on you. When you have pride, it's always somebody else. You never go down to, I need to do this for me. And what I am talking about here, I lived for years in the box. Mm. For years, ministering, preaching, traveling, all everywhere, and was in the box. There was certain truth that couldn't penetrate because of what I thought. Mm. I'm saying that to let you know it could be you. Sometimes we put it on somebody else. The reason my relationships are not whole. Ain't no, no men right, no women right. Have you ever thought about you the problem? Have you ever thought about it? Could be something wrong with you. Okay. Read, 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 read. Yeah, yeah, you're in a hurry to work because I fly. I fly away, oh glory, I fly away. For though we walk in the flesh. Though we walk in the flesh. We do not war according to the flesh. If my war is not with flesh. Go ahead, go ahead. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. The weapons of our warfare, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. And we use the word warfare a lot and people don't know what we're talking about. When you stand up and start singing the praises of God, that's warfare. When you walk around and say, what is my strength, is my joy, that's warfare. When you start saying out of your mouth, I am what God says I am, and I'm not what the devil says I am, I'm not what the past says I am, I'm not what disappointment says I am, I'm not what my wrongdoing made me, I am what God called me, that's warfare. Because you're speaking the word of God back to an enemy that wants you to think you're defeated and won't ever make it. But he is a liar. Hello, are we ready? And it says, but mighty in God. But mighty in God. For That's why we're we going to tear it up today because it's mighty in God. I don't care what happened to you. The devil thought he had the victory. When you got raped or molested at 5 or 6 or 10, he thought he had you. But he didn't know but that today was coming. Last Wednesday came. And no, I got what happened to me. It, I, I don't care if it was your fault. And the problem with molestation is some it, it, molestation sexually is God made the female organs uh, and the male organs to feel good. So even if it was wrong, it felt good. So you guilty feeling, I shouldn't enjoy it because it was wrong. But I came to free you today and tell you, although you enjoyed it, you're still all right with God. Couldn't push that big old man or that big woman off of you. Some of y'all got molested by women. Women got molested by women. What you going to do? you five, six years old. You can't push that big person off of you. And then they threaten you and tell you, if you go tell somebody, they ain't going to believe you. And I'm going to kill you. And, the, and then you, have, you raised up with guilt. And now you come in church, you get the Holy Ghost. But there's a problem. You got the Holy Ghost and that with the burning fire. But there's some memories in your past that won't turn you loose. And in them dark nights and those times when it looked like God's going to bless you the most. And those times when, oh, he's about to bless me, he's about to elevate me. And right around that time, that thought comes back to your mind of what that somebody did to you. And you feel guilty about something that, you, that ain't got nothing to do with your success. God does not impute sin. That means he doesn't hold sin against you. It's called grace. Even if you did it on purpose, sin is not imputed against you. It's called grace. 
God doth only the devil.